Congratulations. We're so excited that you are uh, part of the class of 2024. Uh, Wake Forest is excited to have you as a member of the community. Um, we've gotten to know you a lot through your application. So we know we ask you lots of questions. We're trying to figure out who you are, who you hope to be, and what sort of endeavors that you're looking to, to pursue and how you'll contribute to our community here at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is certainly a community. I think it's a really dynamic community um, where you'll find lots of challenge, you'll find lots of support, and I think you'll find all of that in our Office of Personal and Career Development. So I think it's really appropriate that we have some great guests tonight from that office who are gonna speak with you. Let me quickly tell you that we're also joined in the session by Thomas Ray, our Assistant Dean of Admissions, and he will be taking your chat requests. Um, so if you have any questions to pose to the panel, uh, make sure that you um, send those through chat. And if you wanna uh, basically give it to a specific person, put that person's name into uh, that chat uh, question as well. So my name is Dawn Calhoun. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions, and I've been in the admissions office now for 21 years. So I've read lots of applications, gotten to know lots of students, and so excited that you are one of those students that we hope will be on our campus to make that positive impact coming up in the next four years. Part of that impact, um, part of that chance that you'll have to grow and understand yourself is through our Office of Personal and Career Development. So our four guests, our three guests tonight, um, will include Andy Chan, who is our Vice President of Innovation and Career Development. We also have Mercy Iga Dayel, who is our Associate Vice President of Career Development and Corporate Engagement, and Heidi Robinson, who is our Assistant Vice President for Career Education and Coaching. So let's kick it off. Let's have a conversation and get to know a little bit more um, from these experts. Um, we're so excited they're here tonight to share their knowledge and their wisdom. And we will start at this point um, with our first question. So let me kick it off and um, send it over to Andy. So I hear that Wake Forest is one of the best at supporting students with respect to their personal and career development. Why is that? And what do you do differently than other schools? Thanks, Don. Great question and greetings to everyone who's out there. We're really excited for you to have the chance to join us at Wake Forest. We love being here and we'd love to work with you. With respect to Don's question, you know, one of the things that we do early on is we engage every student in their first days on campus to understand that being career and life ready, and not just only career ready, but life ready is one of the top goals for your college experience. Given that the world of work is very dynamic and very uncertain right now, but it always has been, but it is especially right now, and it will be as we go into the future, we're really committed to your being employable for life. We really want to teach you the skills and competencies that will make you so that you can be able to be employed, whatever the market might be. We have a lot of unique offerings and resources that address every single student's personal area of interest, even if you're not sure what you want to study or where you may want to work but you can make sure that we've got stuff for you. Uh, one of the key things that is very unique at our school are the career courses for which you can earn credit as they're available to every single student who wants to take one and are proven to increase our students' GPA and their internship and career outcomes. These courses were actually designed and many of them are taught by um, Professor Heidi Robinson, who actually is on this call today. Um, we also have a very serious mission-driven commitment to your personal career development that starts right at the very top of the university, from our president, Nathan Hatch. He hired me 10 years ago. I came from Stanford and uh, he basically said, let's create something that no one in the whole um, world of college and universities will do anything like, and we've really done that. We have over 40 staff members on our career team and we have more resources per student than almost any other university in the country. Most schools five or even 10 times bigger than Wake Forest don't have as many staff members as we have. And we know this works because about 98% of our graduates are employed or in grad school within six months of graduation each year for the past seven years. And we also know we're one of the best in the country because we've won many industry awards for being the best or most innovative school at college career development. We also have been recognized for having really amazing um, programming and financial support for students from diverse backgrounds and students who are, have any particular financial need. In fact, over 200 schools have come to visit Wake Forest over the last 10 years to help understand how they could do their work better at their schools because of our model for personal and career development for both students and for alumni. And I'll pass it back to you. Sure, thanks Andy. 
And so you mentioned Heidi. And so Heidi, I turn to you and I have a question that is, I wonder how a student who chooses a liberal arts major will do in today's employment market. What does Wake Forest do to ensure that these students are employable and career ready? Oh, Don, I love that question. So we actually talk a lot about this. We are proud of our liberal arts foundation and our history. And so we believe that the liberal arts is what the world needs. And so all of the skills that come with the liberal arts are the ones that are actually so applicable, particularly in times of transition. I would say one of the things that I love to say, we all love to say, is that your major doesn't necessarily dictate your career path. There's sort of this old idea that if you are, for example, a psych major, that then you're going to be a psychologist. I would say that that psych major is just as effective in sales. They are just as effective in a host of different way, leadership roles in business. And so what I would say is that we prepare students who are liberal arts majors by helping them have the skills that they will need to be effective when they leave the workforce. So what we believe is that students will go ahead and gain those skills while they are here, and then both curricular and co-curricular experiences prepare them to go ahead and step into that workforce with that liberal arts degree. We believe the liberal arts degree is a, is a flexible tool in their hand, and with a few notable exceptions, the degree does not dictate career path, as mentioned before. And so our students, we have history majors who go on into investment banking, we have students who are English majors who go off to do various things leading different areas of business. So I would say that not only do we have anecdotal information that way, but we're very transparent about what actually happens. So we would be very proud for you to log on to our website and go under the tab that says explore. Under that drop down menu, please pick explore majors. And then once you are there, choose any major you like. In fact, choose something that you think, I don't know what they do, maybe philosophy. And it'll say, where do philosophy majors go? <gasps> they go everywhere. And so what I would love for you to see is not just to believe what I am telling you as I sit here, but I would love for you to see our data because it goes back many years and it will show you, it will demonstrate conclusively that our liberal arts students go into a host of different things and they make impact across industry and job function. So I would say not only do we have liberal arts majors everywhere and doing all sorts of host of different things, but they take courses for credit. They begin early and intentionally. They have coaches that help them with mindset and personal branding tools. And for these reasons, they go out with that liberal arts degree and they build lives of meaning that matter to them. So important too. I think when you think about college and this next step, it's that building that life of meaning and that that career of meaning and happiness. And I think <laughs> that the OPCD office, you all do an incredible job with that, you know, helping students to visualize and understand that life of meaning. And I think Wake Forest as a whole, that incredible community allows students, one, to study through the liberal arts, that first two years, not even declaring a major, but having a chance to understand all these different areas of academics and how they intersect and intertwine. And then you all help and, and build and, and there's that, that community effort that goes on to enrich the lives of students in that four years. I would just add, Don, that because we are a liberal arts education, we believe that those students should engage with us early and intentionally. So, mm -hmm. so our liberal arts kids have those skills from day one. Um, that's where we want them. We want them in our offices. So I think they actually have not only an idea of how to go about building that career, they have a sense of how to apply those skills from the liberal arts education in the workplace. Mm. It's definitely a welcoming office. So that day one, you guys roll out the welcome mat, which is, is wonderful. So Mercy, we'll turn to you. So I understand that Wake Forest has one of the best business schools in the country. So what does my student need to do to get into that program and how difficult is it? But then if my student doesn't qualify, what are other ways that my student can compete for business jobs in those business opportunities? Right, well, the rumor is true. We do have one of the best undergraduate business school and graduate business schools in the country. And I know that we're all proud to represent that. And before I talk about that, Don, I just wanna say, I know that for our audience today, choosing 
where they go to school is one of the most important decisions that they will make outside of their spouse, potentially, and outside of their career. So we just want you to know that as you make this decision, we want to provide you and equip you with information that's going to help you make a really informed decision for your future. And we hope that that's here at Wake Forest because we really want to see you here. Um, I, you know, I've been asked to talk a little bit about our undergraduate business program. And if you've seen the rankings, it is true. You know, we've ranked uh, number 13 with Business Week, number 17 with Poets and Quads, and US News and World Report ranked us at number 27. So not a, a shabby sort of positioning for the business school. We're really excited and really proud about that. Definitely our faculty um, sort of help us get to where we are, but it's really our students also and the talent that we have within the business school that I really think makes uh, the business school as successful as it is today. We have four academic majors, accounting, business enterprise management, finance, and mathematical business. Those are the four different majors that the business school offers. And it is true that with the high rankings uh, also comes a highly competitive application process. So students are invited to apply to the business school their second semester of their sophomore year. So that's actually when you apply. Um, you go through that process and then Betsy Hoppy and her team, you'll probably get to hear from her at some point too. Uh, they're the team that manages all the internal review processes with the faculty. Um, a couple of things just that you should be aware of, um, and Betsy wanted to make sure that I told you this, is that because the application process is so competitive, we want incoming students to pay attention to your grades because your grades do matter um, as your application is being sort of evaluated. Um, the average GPA for the class of 2020, the entering class into the business school, they average 3.6. Um, and the students have to maintain a C or better in the prerequisite business school courses. And that ranges from accounting to business enterprise management. Um, so let's say that this really does become the path. And let's say what happens if you don't get into the business school? What will you do then? Well, there's a couple of things that I just want to tell you. One is most of our employers do not hire just business school students. In fact, they, want, they won't come to Wake Forest if we only have them come see our business school students. They really want to see all Wake Forest talent. And so with the exception of a few employers like financial services or maybe even accounting, um, where their role requires a more rigor in the academic preparation, outside of those roles, really it's open season for any Wake Forest major. So that's the good news. And um, to go along with it, let's say you really did want to get some kind of business skill training or some um, just exposure to business education. There are three specific programs that I just want to make sure that you're aware of. The first one is a summer management program. And this is a 10 week program and it's actually going to happen this year online, which is great. Um, and you have to apply to get into the program. It's competitive, but it doesn't require you to maintain a certain GPA. So you do have to uh, write your personal statement and submit your GPA and all that's considered, but it, there's not a GPA requirement. Um, and the application period for that actually is, is happening right now um, and through the end of May. The second program I want to share with you is uh, what we call our pre-Wall Street career track. So for those of you who are aspiring um, either investment bankers or you want to work in financial services, the thing with financial services now is they don't necessarily require that you're a finance major. They actually um, encourage all majors to apply. So we wanted to make sure that we put together a program to support students who are interested in this track who may not get into the business school or who may not want to come to the business school. Um, so this particular program, it's an application only program. You apply your second semester of your freshman year, and then you get into the program and then we help you with all the basics to understand on how you get into a financial services career. 
And then the final thing I'm going to mention is we have a brand new sports business program. This is really exciting. In fact, the undergraduate dean of the business school is the one who's going to be running this program. And it is a summer program and it will be online for this first year. Um, it's a three week program. Again, you learn about sports marketing, analytics, sports management, et cetera. It's fun. It's three weeks. Don't want to miss it if you're into sports. Um, but I think that between all three of those programs and the fact that so many of our employers hire outside the business school, you're set to go. But we want you at the business school too. Don't get me wrong. We want you at the business school too. <laughs> One other thing um, around that, that a lot of people may not be aware of, but we have one of the top um, undergraduate um, entrepreneurship programs where students of any major can actually get a minor in entrepreneurship. And so it allows actually many students to learn about business and entrepreneurship without actually having to go to the business school. In fact, of all the students in that minor, 80% uh, of them are actually in uh are, are from the liberal arts program so I, I do think that's a really important one to mention uh, some of the spin-offs of the program um, i was part of helping sort of design it from the very beginning we have a, a group that right now this year we had a group come to california as part of a wake west study away program where you can actually do um, an internship in northern california during spring semester and then also take two entrepreneurship classes one that i taught uh, with a colleague of mine who's a professor at Stanford Business School on entrepreneurship, and then also another one that was taught by the faculty director, Rebe Rebecca Gill, who's a professor of communication and entrepreneurship. So I would say that's actually one, one way that you can also get a lot of exposure to entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, and one other thing that came to mind is that um, we, we actually have in, and Mercy can talk a bit more about it, some of the pre-experience programs as ways for students if they you yes. know, whatever they might major in, they might decide, well, I actually want to get a little bit more exposure to business. And so we have a master's in science and management program, master's of science and management program and a master's of science and business analytics type program that are great ways for whatever you study to be able to actually uh, get some good business training as one year right after um, college and then to be able to go on into business roles after that. Uh, one other thing is if you do really well in school, that those programs have great scholarships and great sort of early entry access by going from Wake Forest for four years and then one more year to those programs that are also um, make you a very attractive candidate to those programs uh, and have an advantage over the average student coming from some other school. That's right. That's great. And just to piggyback on that, from the liberal arts perspective, several different majors have actually added different studies that are business related. So in sociology, they have several things where you study sort of the the uh, basics of business through a sociology lens. Communication has another one. So I love that we're talking about a number of different ways where you can go ahead and flavor your liberal arts education with getting some of that business experience across the campus. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times students are interested in Wake Forest and interested in a liberal arts school because they have so many interests across the, the curriculum and don't have to decide right away. I think you know, when I was looking at schools, I remember thinking, goodness, I have all these different interests. It's hard to narrow it down so quickly. And Wake Forest, which I ultimately ended up myself, I went to, to Wake for, for undergrad and grad school both, so I'm very biased about the school, but, but I feel like it allows students to really be curious, really to, to seek knowledge in lots of different areas and not feel so um, siloed into one area or make a decision too quickly. They have a chance to really kind of figure themselves out, but also, again, gaining support from, from OPCD and getting lots of help and support from faculty members, professors across the board. Again, that I think that theme keeps coming up, the support and opportunity. There's a lot of different ways to, I think, really grow, and Wake Forest will um, really enhance that, and the, the community that we have there will do the same. That's right. So thinking too, yeah, thinking about professional or graduate school that, that's been mentioned here. So Heidi, if, if I have a student who's interested in professional or graduate school, tell me about how you support them, how, how that works. Oh, I love talking about that because I would say between 25 and 30 percent historically of our graduating classes have gone to graduate school. So knowing that we want to tailor some of the things that we do and the support that we offer directly to those students. In fact, in our office, we actually have the person who is the pre-law advisor 
She's got her own little space right there. And that's just one example. What I would also say is that we have a coach and his specialty is in the pre-health, pre-med, all of the STEM kinds of areas. He works very close, closely with the health professions committee, which are the faculty for a lot of the pre-med and pre-health folks. So we hold different kinds of workshops on writing your personal statement. And let me tell you, those are, those are very popular because nobody really wants to do them by themselves. And so we actually have a wonderful social learning experience where students are writing those. We have support for students who are needing to um, sort of understand what are the kinds of um, exams I need to take if I'm going to law school? What is it that I take if I need, if I want to go to be a PA? So we have different kinds of supports that are really tailored to those. And in fact, for the social sciences, one of our coaches, we just consider her the queen of the personal statement. And so a lot of folks had her direction because those are really, that's really her specialty. So a lot of times to Mercy's point and to Andy's point, and to your point, Don, students have this freedom for the first two years to really explore what it is that they're passionate about or that the kinds of studies that actually speak to who they are. And so sometimes students come in saying, I've been, I've wanted to be a physician since I was very small. We can help them. And um, we can also help those students who sort of in their junior year say, I really feel called to issues of, of children. And I wanna go ahead and be someone who's an advocate for children who are in need. And so we can sort of across that board, whether it's a, someone who comes in early on, who's very directed or someone who sort of through their process comes to decide that it is graduate school for them. I would say that we have thought very thought we have very thoughtfully prepared support. Last thing I would say is that one of the best things that we have done is we have developed relationships with the faculty in each one of our academic departments. What does that mean? It means that periodically we convene what is actually a very large committee because we have these partners who are there with a student say in foreign languages wants to go ahead and consider what that would look like to go on to have a graduate degree. They can see someone in our office and they also have someone embedded within their department who can help them also be supported in that journey. Yeah, that theme, that support, it definitely keeps coming up. And so thinking there is graduate school, but there's also gaining employment. So thinking about recruiters who comes to campus so, so Mercy, what kind of employers recruit at Wake Forest and what do they actually say about Wake Forest students? That's great. Well, I, I like to start with what do employers say about Wake Forest students? Because I think, you know, that really speaks to why we have such great companies and organizations recruiting at Wake. Um, so you oftentimes will hear a recruiter say our students are very professional and well prepared not only well prepared from an academic standpoint, but they have a very clear idea of where they're headed, which when you talk to a lot of recruiters and they go to a lot of different schools, it's like music to our ears to hear that our students are listening to what we're saying and actually preparing um, the right uh, sort of story about where they're trying to go at post-graduation. The, the other things that you'll hear recruiters say is they talk a lot about Wake Forest Strong, the work ethic that our students have, um, the fact that they're critical thinkers, uh, that they can, uh, they're problem solvers, they're compassionate and have a service orientation. And all of these things, which actually make them great teammates and great leaders within their organization. So these are the kinds of things that we hear about our talent. And of course that makes us all very proud. Um, the kinds of organizations that recruit at Wake, we have many of the, um, world's top organizations that recruit at Wake Forest, you know, companies like Amazon and Bain and Company, BlackRock, Deloitte, EY, KPMG, the National Institutes of Health, uh, Teach for America, and, and literally the list goes on and on. And the great thing about this time is even though we're in a situation right now where a lot of on-campus recruiting has halted, a lot of our employers continue to want to recruit our students through virtual means. And so that, that recruiting machine, as they continue to 
um, assess what their talent needs are, um, Wake Forest is on the top of their list in terms of institutions that they turn to uh, to get that talent, either for internships or full-time opportunities. Wonderful. I think a lot of times when I'm talking with prospective students coming into Wake Forest, they often ask, well, tell me or describe a Wake Forest student. So it sounds a lot like what employers or recruiters are saying about students is that that critical thinking piece, students who are compassionate, students yes. who are members of, of a community or want to be members of a community. And so it, it carries through, it sounds like, through that four years and then what recruiters are seeing as they're looking to employ Wake Forest students. Right, for sure. If I could add to what Mercy said, it is that often when a recruiter comes and they hire one Wake Forest student, they come back because our students just look different in the marketplace. And exactly. so they often will say, yeah, I think I'll actually come back to go ahead and, and grab a couple other you know, stars like that. And I would say additionally, our alumni feel very much the same way, given the choice given any opportunity, not only will they help our current students and are very passionate about that, they want them in their organizations because it's like a seal of approval of excellence. And so I would just add to what Mercy said, not only do our recruiters say that, but oh, they come back because they wanna hire more talent like that. Wonderful, wonderful, yes. I'll say, I'll say one other thing that's actually very interesting is that um, you know there might be some students out there who have heard the uh, name workforce, and it may be sort of intimidating, but the reality <laughs> is that our admissions office would not accept you if we didn't think you could do the work, and we believe that you're a great student. That's probably the one first. Second is that um, because you do the work as, you know, you, at the, you students work so hard at Wake Forest, um, and they're so diligent, and also they're in small class sizes, you really learn how to speak up in class, learn how to build relationships with your classmates and with your professors, and that's exactly what it's like when you go to the workplace, like the workplace, more and more people are actually expecting you to communicate with lots of other people who are different from yourself. And so if you do that in the classroom, it's actually really easy to do when you actually go off to the workplace. And what we find is that a lot of um, employers tell us more and more young people don't want to communicate with other people. More and more young people aren't really good at being able to actually be really clear about their communication. And you really get trained on how to be a great communicator by being in a small place like Wake Forest. Also, because we have so many clubs and so many opportunities for you to take leadership roles, you can do those things and practice in the college space as opposed to like not doing anything. And then you go to the workspace and then you're asked to actually be a leader and you don't know exactly what that means. So in a lot of ways, being in our environment allows you to build a lot of skills and experiences that help you to be really effective when you get out into the workplace. And again, being in a smaller place allows you a lot more opportunities to pick and choose what those things are. And as a lot of people will tell you, like college is a time to to take sort of chances and risks and try things in a very low cost way so that when you go out to the workplace, you're actually gonna be more confident and able to succeed. So I just think that that's a really um, unique thing I think about uh, going to a smaller place like Wake Forest where there's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's incredible the, the class sizes that we have from, from first year through senior year where students are able to have these great discussion-based classes and grapple with this knowledge grapple with these questions that, that are occurring in the world and being these global citizens, but also being surrounded by people who are different than they are, who think differently, come from different backgrounds. And I think that's how you learn. Uh, when you are surrounded by people who, who think differently, you're challenged to also think differently. You're, you, you're challenged to figure out who you are and who you're surrounded by and really learn. And I think that's such a, a benefit to Wake Forest. And our, our professors will really challenge students to to, to think about their opinions and, and where they're coming from and to, to learn from their fellow students. So, so I love your point, because I, I, think, I think Wake Forest is the smaller place. It's a place where students are gonna find that opportunity to challenge themselves, to take those risks, risks and, and to really grow from, from all of those, um, those risks that they take. Um, so, so yeah, again, very biased, but, but I think that that small environment <laughs> allows for students to grow and to understand and learn to communicate and learn to understand those around them. John, I would just add on to that. Yes, they learn to grow in all, in all of those settings. I would also say one of the things that I think is really important is that we are a mentoring campus. So the vast majority of students would say that one of the reasons that they really appreciate those smaller class sizes is not only because of the relationships and the learning that happens between their peers, but often it is because they have mentors and faculty and staff 
and that really changes the nature of their journey in college. Um, we yes. have an entire mentoring resource center because we want to train people on our campus to be really good mentors to our students. And that is a game changer in terms of having somebody on your side who can share wisdom and, and you know is someone that you can count on for those deeper conversations that you're referencing. And our professors, our, our faculty, our staff, they really care. They take an interest in students. And so I think that changes things too, understanding that they want you to be in class. They, they want to hear your opinion. They want to hear what you're hoping to do and how they can step in and mentor and how they can be part of that growth process. That's right. Now, I know we're getting a little bit tight on time. And as I mentioned, we were gonna take some questions from, from our audience. So at this point, I'm gonna to turn to Thomas Ray. He will suddenly appear um, and he's going to introduce himself and then also pose some questions to you all too that he has uh, gathered from our listening audience. All right, Don, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, and again, my name is Thomas Ray. I'm an assistant dean in the Office of Admissions. Uh, I'm also a Wake Forest graduate myself. And to be here and to share some of these questions that we've received over the last few minutes. Questions, if things come up, please feel free to share those in the chat as well. Um, Andy, I, I think I might want to start with you first. You had mentioned a little bit earlier about study away programs. Um, our listeners have uh, specifically kind of asked about our Wake Washington program, Wake West. Two is another opportunity for students to pursue. Could you explain what study away means for Wake Forest or, or what kind of opportunities our students have there? That's great. Thanks, Thomas. Um, so in the United States, we have two main programs that are study away. One is in Washington, DC. One is in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, the main idea behind it is that students are able to take a full semester and be able to um, work at an internship during the week. Usually it's Monday through Thursday. Um, it's, it can be a little bit different in Washington. Maybe it could be Monday through Friday, but I think it's Monday through Thursday. And then generally the students are taking class in the evening or in, in the Wake West situation, it's like one evening and then on a Friday morning. And then throughout the week, either during the evening or on one of the days, the students are able to go in either two organizations like to go visit the White House or the CIA or a think tank in, in Washington, D.C. or a consulting firm or in the Bay Area to go visit companies like Facebook and Slack and Tesla. And so you get to see uh, and work in those environments. You get to live in those environments with um, a set of other Wake Forest students. And uh, then you also get your coursework done. So you get a full 12 units of credit in either program. And you feel like you got a full semester of both work experience and education at the same time. The students who go really love it. The one thing they probably all they probably talk about most though is that it was really a lot of work. It was both a lot of fun and a lot of work because they have to both work on the job someplace and then also do their academic work. It's a little bit like an adult who's actually you know, working during the day and having to go to school during the evening. But they will very much say it's worth it. They build a huge network of connections and it leads to great internships and jobs after that. Um, the other types of things that we have available through our study away programs is that many of our study away programs are mostly at places all around the world. And depending on the partnerships with other schools or other programs, some of them do have the ability to do internships in those locations. It's not everywhere. Sometimes they're actually more just academic, but sometimes they're a blend of internship and academic. So I think many of you might know, but if you don't, Wake Forest is known for being one of the top five or 10 uh, schools in the country in terms of percent of students who go overseas and, um, and go off campus for a semester or a year. And uh, as a result, it's just part of the culture. And we created one of the most uh, prestigious uh, global studies offices that can help you go wherever you want to go and probably serve whatever people you want to serve or learn whatever you want to learn. Um, they can be of all different kinds of shapes and sizes. And they're incredibly flexible. So I would say if you haven't actually looked that up, definitely take a look because there might be some place in the world that you're dying to go or see. And for basically the same cost as what you're going to spend on tuition, you can use that to go overseas someplace. And that's a really huge advantage that I think Wake Forest offers that's uh, really desirable to a lot of students. Thanks again, thank you so much. Um, one of the, the great things about watching the, the growth of, of Wake Forest over the last 
five or 10 years, it's really easy to see too how Winston-Salem has grown as well. Um, the innovation quarter is without doubt a fan of, of growth, of development, of research, of opportunity as well. And, and Andy, I'm not sure if you're, you're best prepared or, or mercy to, to answer this question, but thinking about the innovation quarter in particular, how are our students supported or encouraged to take advantage of opportunities in downtown Winston-Salem? Do you want to take that and I can follow up? Nope, I'm okay. You can you can leave. That's fine. Well, there's there's a couple of ways in which we help support students. So you probably are familiar with the fact that our School of Engineering is located uh, in Innovation Quarter. And we actually had a career coach on staff. His name's Brian Mendenhall, and he's considered our STEM coach, if you will. And Brian actually has a great relationship with the department and goes down and meets with our students there um, and really works on developing, um, you know, just career action plans, opportunities to connect them with the market. Um, but the thing that I love about Brian is he will go to their campus and then he'll encourage students to come to Wake Forest as well. So even though we're located downtown, we like to make sure that our students feel as though we're operating as one institution. Um, there's a there's a lot of different opportunities. In fact, one of our um, sort of small business or entrepreneurial employers is called Wellnessity, and they're located down in that innovation quarter area. And um, if we think about the different kinds of student projects um, that really um, complement the academic experience. That's another way in which we leverage a lot of our wake downtown, if you will, relationships um, to help create those opportunities for us. And I should also mention another employer by the name of Inmar um, that's located right down in that same area. And so there's a real partnership across Winston-Salem leadership, um, the leadership among the businesses around the community, um, in downtown and in the course with the university. And it's a really um, fantastic synergy of what we're able to offer both in terms of academic excellence and also practical application of experience with opportunities right downtown. I might like to also speak to the other side too. I mean, our students, there's Bailey Park down there. They do yoga yeah. in the park. Thank um, you. Heidi. All of these amazing <laughs> restaurants because the innovation quarter. I mean, I know this is an academic, but it is part of the fun <laughs> of Wake Forest. There are the downtown has just blossomed. And so there are all sorts of fun things that our students love to do down there. There's a biking area, um, just lots of fun outdoor things. There are lots of um, Winston Salem is a place that sort of encourages some of that. And now that the downtown has innovation quarter not only are there academics and some of our health programs are down there in in innovation quarter but that's also a place where students are enjoying sort of um really the beauty of winston-salem and i think that's a fun part too sorry tom i didn't quite ask about that but i do think that's fun. well i'll add two more thoughts is so um people don't know this but winston is known in north carolina as a city of arts and innovation and that the um, arts part of it is really cool on Trade Street in particular. They have a lot of really cool art shops and a lot of um, really neat little restaurants and coffee shops and breweries and things like that. And then also in terms of just the, the music, like in terms of a lot of different kinds of music from the symphony to musicals and other types of things available. I will say that one of the programs that if you are interested in the engineering program, um, people wonder like what are the employment opportunities? And what I can tell you is that from um, our standpoint that the those engineering type students, should they want to be in business or in the sciences or in research or in medicine, like in general, they're very attractive to all of those different people. As long as you do well in school and you apply yourself, like there is something about that program and the uniqueness and the diversity of the types of students and the types of faculty and sort of the cutting edge nature in which it, the program was created, that it is definitely the kind of undergraduate engineering program that most schools in the country are looking to figure out how to replicate. So um, I would definitely say if you have any interest in the sciences and a bit in engineering and the way of thinking like an engineer, uh, that program is amazing. And one, again, from an employment standpoint, all those students are very, very employable. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you all. Um, we, we talked uh, about Winston-Salem the last couple of minutes. 
Um, and if I could try to expand our conversation to think more broadly, you know, Wake Forest is in Winston-Salem. We are in the state of North Carolina. Uh, certainly for a lot of our students, they pursue internships and maybe even secure employment in North Carolina. How does the Office of Personal Career Development help those students, maybe who are thinking to leave the Southeast, maybe who are looking to go back home, wherever home may be, or what support will students expect if they're looking beyond home or looking beyond North Carolina going forward? Sure, um, Thomas, I'll take that and then I'll let um, Mercy and Heidi sort of back me up here. So most of you, if you didn't know, um, you know, Wake Forest is an incredibly diverse school from the standpoint of where people come from. So if you actually try to look at like student profile, student body, um, it doesn't look like the way you might expect in that fact that, um, you know, cl close to, you know, 10 to 15% each year of students are coming from the Northeast, another 10 to 15% are coming from the Mid-Atlantic, another maybe 10 to 50%, maybe even as many as 20% are coming from the Southeast. And then North Carolina itself is probably like 15 to 20%. So it's very spread out. And then you have anywhere from five to 10% coming from the West or from the Midwest. And so and then also, obviously we have like 10% coming from international locations. So it's incredibly diverse. That's not something a lot of students will say, I did not realize when I came to Wake Forest that like half my hallway isn't gonna be from the South or from North Carolina. Like they were just like, they're from all over the place and that's really fun. So that's the first thing. Second thing is if you actually look at where do our students go? So Heidi mentioned our website. We actually have a location on our website. If you actually go to our opcd.wfu.edu website and you type in the search box, uh, where do where, where do deacons go? Or where do, uh, yeah, where do demon deacons go? You end up on this page where you see like all the places they go. And we go basically back to all the places I just described where they came from. In fact, if, in, if anything, like there are top cities where students go uh, they tend to be uh, New York, D.C., uh, Charlotte, um, Winston, because a lot like to stay in the area, Atlanta. Those are sort of like the big ones because a lot of people came from those areas and want to go back to these bigger cities. And then now we're starting to see more people go to San Francisco, to Chicago, to Dallas. And so we're able to help them get to all these different kinds of places. And, and one of the biggest reasons why is that we have a very large employer relations team that works for the whole school, as Mercy has mentioned, I think, is that it's really for not just the business students or just the college students, it's for the whole school. And then the second thing is that um, we do a ton of outreach to our 70,000 alumni to ask them for wherever they are in the world to come recruit students or get their organizations to. And then on top of that, if any of you parents who are out there, we will come ask you if your organizations are the kinds of places that hire college students and are a place that our college students would like to work. They're great places to get your career started. You'll be able to recruit here too. Many of the companies who recruit at Wake that Mercy mentioned all came as a result of parent introductions. They're not only about our alumni. We have so many people in our network. And that's one of those things that if you haven't heard it, but we really cultivate like the entire family. Like we actually want the student to come I really care about the whole family feeling like I want to know what's going on at Wake Forest too because I really like this place. I'm really interested. And so we actually have a, a daily blog called the Daily Deke. If you haven't seen it, you should subscribe to it. If you're a parent, you will get this amazingly um, cultivated blog as to all these cool things happen around Wake Forest, which that's one way we communicate to parents. Hey, here's some things that are going on in the career end you might want to be aware of so that you can remind your student because actually that might be something that be, might be interested in. We're really trying to have the sort of whole unit of the family work together to have your child to be successful. Um, it, this is one of those things where we realize uh, this is sort of a team game and we're in it with the, with the whole family. So that's one way we've been able to get students to go, not just to be in the South, but all over the country, no matter where they want to go. And we do quite a few things where we'll do treks where we'll take student groups out to go visit. And now in this whole time of the COVID virus, we actually are doing tons of virtual visits where we have uh, parents and alumni setting us up for us to do visits where um, dozens and dozens of students are getting to talk to someone at Tesla or at Facebook or at Goldman Sachs. Like we're just learning about ways to connect with people without having to all have to fly there, which is actually really efficient. And it's actually a way for a lot of students to get a lot of information really quickly. That's right. Very good. I'll jump in. 
I would love for your, as you look at our website, I would also encourage you to log on to LinkedIn and up in that little um, search box, go ahead and put in Wake Forest University. You'll know you're at our spot when it says founded in 1834, co-educational. You'll know that you're on the right spot. There's a box or I guess a series of tabs on the far left, hit alumni. And then what you can do is you can sort and see where our alumni go, where they've landed and holy cow, it's everywhere. So um, how do we help students get everywhere? It, it really is our network. The other thing I would encourage you to do is to put in Wake Forest University Career Connectors. That is simply a group of people who are standing in the crowd, alumni, parents, friends of the university, who are saying, no matter where you wanna go, we wanna help you. We have alumni, um, Wake Forest alumni in Atlanta, Wake Forest alumni in Dallas, Wake Forest alumni in Detroit. I haven't looked at that one recently, but we have them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And those are all of our folks who want to support our students getting opportunities, having open doors in every place they can imagine. And that includes international. I love it when students say, oh, we don't have anybody who's working in sports in Europe. Oh, we do, actually. Let's look up on LinkedIn. So um, I would say, Thomas, that's one of the things. Um, and that's something that's open to you as parents and as, as students who are, we want you here as our future demon deacons. I'd love for you to go ahead and see where those who just graduated or graduated a few minutes ago, where they are, because they want to help you too. That's right. Thank you all for your contributions. Dawn, I, I, I want to be mindful of our time here this afternoon. Uh, do, do I have time for, for any other questions? I think we're getting close to our time. So I, I hate to cut you off, but I think I think it's about time. And I find what's what's always amazing is how much knowledge, how much passion, how much enthusiasm um, our members, community members at Wake Forest have. And it's very evident um, with our OPCD uh, colleagues here. And we thank Thomas for the questions. Um, but we really put a, a huge debt of gratitude to Andy and Mercy and Heidi, and we thank you all for being here, for sharing your Wake Forest, for sharing your enthusiasm. Um, and please know that we are always available. Reach out to us. I think Wake Forest is a place of relationships. And so you hopefully have started a relationship with us um, and we want to continue that. So if you have questions, if you need help with anything, please reach out to any one of us. Um, you can also, hopefully, once you enroll, uh, we would love to see you on campus, but reach out to, to the Office of Personal and Career Development. As was mentioned, day one, they want to see you. They want to be part of your academic life, your social life, and, and to help you um, to grow and to change and to be a better version of yourself as you make your way through Wake Forest. So we're so excited to, to have this group here tonight. Um, let us know if we can help moving forward. We also want to congratulate you again. I don't think we can ever congratulate you enough. You have worked very hard. Um, you've accomplished a lot, and we look forward to see those accomplishments that you'll make at Wake Forest. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. We look forward to having you on campus and seeing the impact that you will make on our campus and beyond. As you heard, there are many opportunities beyond Wake Forest, beyond Winston-Salem, that will uh, cultivate who you are and um, create just a, a wonderful global citizen um, that, that you are. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you to our panelists. Congratulations. We wish you the best of luck and, and best health. Thank you. Go Deeks. Yes. Go Deeks. Go Deeks. Go Deeks.